one commentary. And welcome back. And as Ray Stevens takes his leave, we'll continue with the next men's singles. Belgium's Johan Tam against Czech. Jan Frolik. Yes, apologies for the caption. Joining me is Leon Douglas. Leon is just uh, taking his seat and we'll just take a chance and time just to reflect on the scores that have gone before us. As you can see in the caption of first match, Kukal in two over Daniel Fond and Villa Lang against Gabriel Oldalegel in two. And uh, we saw Andre Curry Monte Jono comfortably dispose of Richard Domka in two games. And on court, nearest the camera, wearing his full tracksuit, Jan Frolik, the uh, Czech Republic number two. And opposite him, from Belgium, the Belgian number one, of course, Johan Tan. On paper, it's Frolik who is the higher ranked and seeded for this event. But uh, on his day, Johan Tan has the measure of most players in this field. And uh, Leon... Good to see you and uh, welcome on board. And uh, you joined us last year. You're joining us again. And uh, another big event for Babington Scotland and uh, superbly organised once again. And uh, looking forward to a good few days. Yeah, very much so. Very nice to be back again. Um, I think if Frolic is very much the the old man in this game, is he not? He's uh, considerably older than Tan, well into his thirties now, I think. So it could be quite an interesting game. Yeah, Jan uh, played on the circuit and then stopped for a couple of years and then I think in the yeah. last two years has come back again. So uh, I've not seen him play for, it must be two years anyway, I think. Uh, he used to be quite a formidable opponent. Yeah, actually beat Peter Kukal to claim the Czech national title two years ago. So uh, all these top Czech men very close to each other, it's just... Kukal, by virtue that he plays more, is yeah. ranked higher. Yeah, they do play quite a physical game too, I think, both of them. Uh, and of Whether course, Johan, who is spending most of his time studying these days, uh, doing his internship in medicine, so spending more time in the hospital than he, did, than he is on the uh, badminton court, and that's really reflected in the Belgians' results of lately, very up and down. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Jan Frolik, Czech Republic. So on his day, Johan can be really good, left, but uh, Tan, lack Belgium. of consistency due to Johan his to commitments off the court Bravo. really uh, right. affecting the Belgium's development at the moment. Of course, big focus for Johan will be the, the European up. Mixed Team Championships coming up in his uh, home country of Belgium in February. Of course, Scotland have qualified. Uh, Scotland went to Czech Republic two weeks ago. Yeah, of won. which Jan Frolik was part of that team. He won his game, unfortunately, against us. But yeah, uh, yeah we had a good, we had a good, over. good weekend. Three straight victories. One all. A resounding success, of course, all over Europe. Those European mixed team championship qualifiers. We hosted one in Dublin, also. And Ireland have qualified. Yeah. Got the bad news today, of course, that Chloe McGee has injured herself quite seriously in Hong Kong. Well, I hadn't so, heard that. Uh, so Chloe is out. We're really, really Two, short one. of top quality uh, women players for that uh, competition in Louvain in Belgium. Do you know the nature of the in injury? All I heard was uh, a knee injury, so um, any knee injury is yeah. certainly uh, it's not it's not a week or a month to recover from. Yeah. So back to the match in hand. Two, oh. As I said, Johan Tan against Jan Frolik, and we certainly do have head-head information between these two players, of course. Jan, who's been around a long time, slightly higher ranked than Johan, but three Johan has the better head-to-head. -head. It's 3-1 to the Belgium. Last meeting was in the World Championships in Copenhagen this year. Tan, victor or victorious in two games, 21-14, 21-17, and before that, in Johan's home three Belgian four. International in 2013. The only victory for Jan Frolik coming in Bulgaria in 07 so it's a long time since Frolik has had a victory over Johan Tan Tan certainly looking the quicker around the course at the moment more agile it's 
Service over. For all. Two players who probably don't play in arenas like this very often, Mark, so it might take them a little while just to adjust to the drift. Uh, certainly yeah. a few players have commented that the drift's stronger this year than it was last year. Yeah, I've already heard that. Actually, Ray was yeah. telling me he was down on court coaching Kukal in the very first commentary game. He left me for the coaching, <laughs> but I can live with that. But uh, he Five said off. it's quite breezy from yeah. one end and... Uh, Certainly stronger than uh, th than last year's, yeah. but it's so big arena, it's very difficult to control it. But if anyone, I think Johan would have more experience in the bigger arena. Yeah, you would think so. Jan tends to play some circuit events. European circuit, so usually, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. In, the, in the smaller, Six, tighter arenas. Five. He's played a lot of tournaments in the recent past, Frolic really has found uh, his passion for the game again after taking a little bit of time out best result Suriname international runner up semi-final at the Log Log Lagos international so uh, really travelling all around the globe Seven, playing five. badminton these days and quarter final at the Mauritius international has had a pretty poor 2000 and 14 Eight, uh, since the start of this season last 32 in Belgium five, beaten in five, the first round of his home Czech international went out in the first round of the Dutch nine, so, uh, five. you can clearly see that Jan Frolik has had a lot of tournaments and maybe he just went over his peak Always difficult to know, I think, with um, <coughs> European singles players. They say Ten, they peak later five. than Asians, 28 to 32, but <coughs> he's a little bit past that now, and you're right, I think he's probably he's probably seen his best days already as a singles player. Yeah, but not only that, you can only really peak as an athlete once, twice, yeah. maximum three times a, a year. year. Yeah. Yeah. 11, five, and you have to try and manage those peaks that the graph still keeps... The average still keeps going up while you have uh, peaks and dips, but uh, sports science is certainly not my forte, but um, you can see from the results that Frolic did peak at the beginning of the summer and it's been pretty much downhill since that, a heavy volume of tournaments under his belt. Yuhan Tan. I think it's very much accepted now, Mark, by most sports science teams, though, that you're right, two or three peaks in a year is what you should aim for uh, the rest of the time you're really trying to maintain your level yeah maintain work on level. your skill level work exactly. on your fitness mm. but Tan certainly raced away to a quick lead 11 five. here 11-5 right. at the first interval Johan of course who was runner up I think it was Morocco was last week when uh, most or two weeks ago when most European players were uh, 12, playing in five. their qualification team events for the European Mixed Team Championship Belgium of course have already qualified yeah. as hosts so a free week for the Tans and I think Leanne went and won and uh, Johan uh, was runner up in the men's 13, singles his best result five. for a long time he got to the last 32 of course in the world championships and uh, won the Turkey International in 2000 and 13, the tail end of 2013, just before Christmas. Of course, these days the the quality of the entry doesn't really matter so much. It's the ranking points, isn't it? So and we're go getting to that critical <laughs> point when everyone starts Six, to speak about Olympic 30. Games and qualification, and uh, yeah. all reasonable sense goes out the window. Yeah, you're, everybody's trying to be well positioned before qualifying exactly, starts. Exactly, exactly. The, the the shaping has started, yeah. you know, and. Yeah. Uh, It'll be interesting to see. I'm pretty impressed with Johan in this match. 14, I interviewed six. Johan uh, in the only for the last edition of the Badminton Europe magazine where I, I write a lot of articles and features for and uh, while not directly telling me 
with a yes or no answer, I certainly uh, read six. between the lines that I think his days of playing right. badminton are pretty much Correction. coming to an end. Um, unable to manage Seven the over. commitments. Yeah. Seven well, it must be the hardest course to try and fit training in around it. <laughs> I think he thought he could do it, to be honest, Leon, yes. and uh, could manage it. But uh, I think, you know, as an athlete, you want to be winning. And if you're not training hard enough, you know in your own heart and soul that you're not doing yourself any favours by coming out and trying to compete. Yeah. Well, when you know others are really putting it, you know, 100% effort in. And, uh, and we've had a few very promising players over the years who chose to study medicine and they've all moved out of the game. They simply couldn't manage to... Reconciled training and no, it's, it's, it's fulfilling their studies. Virtually impossible. I think Johan is in his fifth Ten, year 14. now of medicine. So it's, yeah, it's uh, a really, tough year. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's serious. Service over. And of course he's got uh, 15, commitments also 10. with the BWF as part of the Athletes Commission where he's yeah. uh, on the committee. Shared, of course, by our own Emma Mason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is a good start for you, Han. 16 10. After five all it was early on, and then Johan went on a run of six, seven points in a row, really stretched out a gap. Good defense again from the Belgian. For me, you know, certainly I worry about what's coming on behind the tans in Belgium. Hmm. It was a huge thing that both of them that was on the line. Ooh, line judge called it out. It certainly hit the line in my opinion. I'm not sure if we get a replay on that. It's not very often you see Johan Tan get upset, but I think he had justification in that case. And, uh, you will see it here. Ooh, I think it may just have caught the line. With 12, both hands, 16. with the tan siblings both reaching the Olympics, there was huge media interest in Belgium, of course. And uh, I just 17, struggling to see where the players 12. are coming on behind. Certainly, don't see too many of them at junior level. And uh, but maybe, hopefully, they'll prove me wrong in years to come. I think, like all small countries, though, you they have to accept that talent comes in cycles. Yeah. We, they won't be the top sport in the country. They won't always attract the best physical athletes into the game. So every so often you come across two or three players um, who push each other on, but it's not going to happen every single generation. And we've uh, we found that the same here over the years. Yeah. We're fortunate just now that we do have quite a good crop of younger players coming through, but we will probably have a small gap. Mm. Uh, you know, we have Kirsty, and then it's probably three four years before we'll produce another another athlete that's anywhere near that level Service over. so Jan Forlick is hanging in there in this game pretty much a mid-game slump for the Czech number two and uh I think most of his points 15, though at the moment are just 18. coming from quite simple errors yeah errors from Johan and this is yeah. his problem this inconsistency due to lack of real meaningful practice yeah nice smash to the body well defended my frolic Oh, great defense from the veteran Czech. Well, he's picked up the point, but he yeah. worked hard in that rally. 16-18. Of course, you're not technically veteran. I must point this out until you're 35. He's <laughs> a year short. Yeah, yeah. But uh, for me, anyone who's over 30 is a veteran of the, uh, of, of, of the professional well, game. Well, he's certainly been on the circuit for a few years <laughs> yeah. anyway. Back to it in two from nowhere. Oh, 
Getting lucky a little bit, Johan. Oh. And a settling smash yeah. down the backhand over. side. 19-16. 14 minutes. 19-16 to the Belgian in white. Leon, great news only coming out yesterday about the World Championships coming to Scotland. Yeah, it's absolutely and, uh, fantastic. It's, you know, a huge coup for Sc Badminton Scotland, considering there were some mighty bids apparently that went in and uh, exciting times. Well, yeah, I mean, it, at first it, it was, there was a sort of sense of disappointment because we just heard that we didn't get the, the Sudderman Cup, which mm. was what, what we'd actually bid for. But to get the individuals is absolutely fantastic. It's the premier event 20. for the BWF. It's the second only to the Olympics, I would say, in, in the sport. Um, and to, to be able to do this now for the third time in, in 30 years is just great. We had both the Sudderman and the individual in 97. Sudderman again in 2007 and now to bring the individuals just completes the cycle. Mm -hmm. So I think to bring that event to this arena will be quite a spectacle. Yeah, another yep. huge event for the Emirates Arena, of course. And uh, first game won by in the end, Tan. Yuhan Tan taking the first game 17. as expected. 21-17, got a good lead, of course, Yuhan, in this first game. But then the break and concentration, some unforced errors from the Belgium. Couple with some good play from the Czech, and really the nerves got jangly from a Belgian perspective towards the end of that game. But a nice smash down the line at 18 really settled Johan and uh, playing quite well. Yeah, so the uh, World Championships coming and a uh, huge event to organise. I can only imagine, Leon. <coughs> well, it started. Started already. Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course. Organization starts. Mm -hmm. Basically started, I would say, a year ago because the time it takes to put a bid together that these days that has any chance of success, it does take at least a year to do that. And there is a, a huge amount of work that goes into that. Um, then you more or less start, as soon as you know you've got the event, you do start on the organization because there are so many facets to it. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure it's necessary to reveal them all no, it's <laughs> to definitely the listening not public, but... Yeah, um, yeah. You can take my word for it that uh, there is a huge amount to do. Mm -hmm. And the balance has to be struck, of course, but in a small organization like ours, because you've got to carry on with the day-to-day -day running uh, of everything else that you do and not let yourself get totally distracted just because you have such a huge event coming along. Just a question, and I, you know, I hope you can answer it. I know this Scottish Open Grand Prix has been Grand Prix for the last two years before that was Challenge event. Will it stay at Grand Prix on the run-up to the uh, Worlds? Yes. Or are you looking beyond that with Grand Prix status? At the moment, the, the arrangement is that it has Grand Prix status until 2017. Okay. So it will definitely be Grand Prix next year and 2016. So I'm sure we'll find uh, some Asian players maybe coming uh, in 2016 to get a feel for this arena. It's normally what you see. Yeah, I think you'll probably also find some coming next year because it will be Olympic qualifying year oh too yeah, and, and yeah, you'd, yeah. you'd normally get them travelling around much more than they do uh, in the first two years of the cycle. So yeah. I would expect there to be development, what they call development One teams, but actually are pretty close to being world class from the likes of Japan, Korea, possibly Indonesia. Malaysia. Yeah. It's a tricky one, obviously, this week because you have China and Hong Kong going on on the other side of the world. Yeah, so I think they, they will always uh, draw the biggest players. They do, but I think that's the beauty of the way the BWF has set up the system. You know, you have a super series, which is basically for the top 32 in the world, and then you have graded tournaments below that. Um, yeah. Grand Prix status, I think. For us, it's, it's a combination. You want a strong entry, uh, but you want the chance of home success. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. And yeah, if, yeah. If, if we had Super Series status, the chances of home success or even European success very slim. are very yeah. slim. Yeah. Three uh, love. So I think f from, the, from the crowd's perspective, the Grand Prix status is brilliant mm -hmm. for, this, for this arena, for this event, for this country. 
and uh, because you'll see some really top players, uh, but you'll also see our players hopefully featuring towards the end of the week. Which we have done in uh, numerous Certain, occasions yes, so far. Um, yeah. Last year it being a point. Yeah, two Note. finals and a win, which mm -hmm. is great. So again, good start for you, Han Tan, Four in the second game with Seven Leon just rabbiting on there about <laughs> things yeah. other than this match. But uh, looking good, the Belgium, looking as good as I've seen him in the uh, recent past. I've seen a very frustrated you, Han Tan, on the circuit. Uh, you know, the mind is certainly working and thinking correctly, but the shots were not there purely through lack of practice. But looking a little bit better. I think he's been giving been given quite a lot of time in this match. I think it'll be interesting, assuming he comes through this, to see how he copes with somebody who brings the shuttle into him a little bit more quickly. Because he does obviously think quite well in the court, but whether with the lack of practice he'll be reactive enough, uh, it'll be interesting to see. Of course, some Scottish connections in the Belgian camp, of course. Well, yeah, we have <laughs> Alan McElveen as the, as the coach. Been there for quite a number of years yes, now, actually. Alan is there as almost as long as I can remember now. Nice cut cross court. Four all. Clipping the line from Frolic. Levels it up at four all. First four points for you, Han Tan. And then the Czech number two comes out and wins. The next four to level it up at four all. And we're back to, I suppose, what you could call Silver. traditional scoring now, of course, after five, the, the, the trial of yeah. the, uh, five sets to, to seven. Do you think, um, oh. what did you make of that? As a commentator, as a commentator's dream. Yeah. As somebody who comments on and talks about badminton a lot. And, uh, and while there was huge, well, not huge, but while there was a measured amount of objection, certainly from some players. Six, four. There were certainly some players who objected to it, had grown to like it by the time they had played a few. And uh, Yeah, th there seems to have been mixed reaction overall, I think, uh, yeah, across the levels. Look, change is always going to bring a uh, reaction across all levels. I certainly enjoyed it. I liked it. Uh, I think it makes a big difference to the game. Outside of the on-court scenario and, uh, you know, how there's so much pressure on every point. Yeah. The things that was certainly... I saw some concern with not actually Seven, uh, the play, four. not the players, but things that become critical are like the standard of line judging. Yes. Because yeah. one bad call can really screw up your set. Yeah. <laughs> when it's uh, up to 11. Where in 21, you can, it tends to even out and uh, yeah. one bad call might not necessar Five, necessarily Seven. destroy a game for any particular player. But I certainly see huge, huge, huge advantages going forward purely not just because of the game and I think it's a better game because of the new system but uh, I do believe they need to bring in setting yeah. Eight, if it does come yeah. um, because if you do get to 10 all why don't you heighten the excitement just for that few more points Yeah, that's just my opinion um, but Nine, I think five. there's a there's the uh, the other advantages where you know you can you should be able to have a shorter tournament from an organisational perspective. Yes, I, I can see it from the organisational yeah, perspective. It, it, it will definitely change some the, money. Yeah, it Nine. will change the game. Maybe for the better, yeah. maybe not. It changes the way players will have to develop, players will have to train. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, it won't suit some players. Certainly the likes Ten of Villa Lang, it will not suit because no. it's not his type of game. But uh, it'll suit players, like packing style players, uh, like Scott Evans, who has flourished in matches that have been in yeah. the new system. Um, well, it's a combination of, of if you can attack with consistency. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because yeah. unforced errors, obviously, are going to be even more costly than they are now. Yeah. Uh, levels yeah. of concentration are going to be have to have to be much higher. Uh, well, Billy Lang's a good example Seven of somebody whose concentration eight. does tend to lapse from time mm. to time. Uh, but then you have the organisational end of it. You know, we have, we have qualification here this morning, for example, and there's some players yeah. who have played three matches. Yeah. And then they have to come out and try and play a first Thanks round. Over. Well, that's a scheduling thing, but when interval. you get to the, the top level, the, the physical dimension of the game will change a little bit, I think. Yeah. Um, 
getting a game under your belt after 11 points as opposed to having to slog it out till 21 yeah. puts yeah. a different demand on you. Oh. And, you know, I was apprehensive about it until I saw it and I went and I experienced it. And, yeah. uh, and certainly there's some players who I've spoken to who are against it but then went and played some of their best badminton yeah. in the in the experiment. I won't yeah. call it the new system because it's not the new system, the experimental yet, system. No. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, it'll be Port interesting wine, to see what the outcome seconds. will be. Port wine, 20 seconds. I think it's quite possible it will be adopted. Uh, it's popular with you, and I think it will be popular with the media yeah. media yeah, in yeah. general. Yeah. I think yeah. that, that does drive not just our sport, but most sports nowadays. Mm. And if that attracts a bigger audience, then it's probably for the best. The, the area that worried me w mostly it wasn't singles is how it would affect doubles, especially yeah. men's doubles, because the rallies tend to be quite short and snappy, and it's flat and it's fast. But uh, say, for example, at the Dutch Open this year, which is Grand Prix Seven also, over. where they played the experimental Eight, system, you know, I saw some really good men's doubles matches that uh, went five games but we're in and around an hour yeah. so that to me uh, sort of eased my fear yeah. Nine, and then there's 11. some ridiculous matches <laughs> that shouldn't even in my opinion be played because uh, there really isn't a need for them <laughs> but then they're over quickly <laughs> <laughs> and we're on to the next one but that's just my opinion and as an independent I can say that <laughs> so because there's actually no reason why they couldn't consider nine. playing to a different s score, a different number for different disciplines. You know, I think y yeah. your your point about men's doubles is is pretty good. I think the games are over quite quickly nowadays. Mm -hmm. The rallies are very short in comparison to ladies' doubles, where the rallies tend to be fairly 15, long. Nine. But even ladies' doubles has become more attacking uh, well at the top level. It's in the recent past. It's more attacking, and mm. it's, it's in some ways it's often the most interesting. Yep. Discipline to watch yeah, because yeah, yeah. the quality of shots is, is yeah. excellent, but 10, the rallies 13. are longer because the defences are so good, mm -hmm. and of course the power is slightly less than in, in the male game, so the shuttle does come back more often. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's get back to this. Yeah, main singles. Where are we? <laughs> it's a uh, one game to look for the Belgian number one Johan Tam. Twenty-six minutes gone, and the Belgian thirteen ten ahead in the second game and. Uh, Frolic just about hanging in there, I feel, Leon. And that's a lovely shot from Tan for a winner. Over. 14, and just 10. keeping his nose in front by this three and four points. Almost keeping the Czech player just at the end of a string, dangling him along. Well, Frolic doesn't really look to me as though he believes he can win this. He's yeah, the body language 10. is just yeah. a little bit negative. Yeah. That's a nice, nice shot. That yeah. was a beautiful yeah. stick smash cross court. Nice winner. No 11, chance for 10. 15. A few little deceptive shots coming in now from the checkman. He's a. Uh, yeah. And dodgy shot choice there, I thought, <laughs> from Tan, cross-court lift onto Frolik's forehand. Yeah, and that's the type of shot that he he would not play 12, 15. Yeah. if he was uh, playing full-time, when, no. when he did play full-time. Mentally, you know, the, the, the decision-making when you get start to get a little bit tired yeah. just becomes a little bit flawed. 13, 15. He's also having a bit more trouble controlling it from this end, I think. It's, it looks to me like this end's a little bit faster. Service over. 16, 13. Just a tweet from uh, David asking, can you buy tickets on the door at the Emirates Arena? David, you surely can come along and get a ticket at the door. So please get yourself down and come in and enjoy the badminton. And thanks for texting us using the hashtag SOGP. <laughs> and Leanne Tan 17, 13. tweeting, live streaming Yuhan Tan, go bro <laughs> <laughs> 
Well done, Leanne, on your win last week, by the way. Service over. 14-17. It's a 14-17. Just approaching the half hour. Fifteen, seventeen. Yeah, Johan just looking a little bit frustrated at the moment with himself, I think. Fifteen, I think this is a crucial point, Leon. Yeah. I think if Johan wins it, he get it across the line. But if Jan Frolik wins it, which he doesn't, he could have really sensed blood. Yeah. Put some real pressure on. 18. Yeah, he's 15. lifted it wide there. Okay, Jan. Yeah. Tan just taking a minute to recover his composure, changing the shuttle. down the backhand side from Johan. Good cross-court smash yeah. from Jan. But a good stretch from Johan, got a racket on it. A little bit of sweat down on the court, a chance for both players just to catch their breath. Yeah. Thank you. 16-18. So crunch time for Jan Frolik. Oh, oh just out. 19-16. Yeah. And you can see Yu Han Tan willing that one out over the baseline. Momentum certainly 20, now with the Belgian match point, fist pump takes Yuhan Tan to match point. You can see Yuhan just having a little chat with himself. Good defense. Yeah, yeah and the push into the body. Yeah. Good rally to win it, uh, Leon. Uh, I think Yuhan just about value for that win. Yeah, just about. Um, I'm not sure how far he's going to go. He's going to have to sharpen up a bit. Match one by you and Just a few lapses from him there. Oh, some wild shots 16. in the second set, some unforced errors. So as the umpire calls it, two-game win for you, Han Tan, 21-17, 21-16. Our next match on court will be almost a local derby. It's two boys who know each, very, each other very much, of course, Kieran Merrilies and Toby Penty. Training together in Milton Keynes, of course, the pair, but uh, Kieran, homebred Scott, and Toby, a young Englishman. We'll take a short break, and we'll be back with that match shortly, and uh, thanks to Leon, and Leon again will join me for that. that uh, I think it's our final streaming match of today. So uh, join us in just a few moments. <laughs> 